All right, doing some big filming requests. These next couple of videos are solely only being done because you, the subscribers, are asking for it. So let's start off with video number one, Hatfield Squads. You know I'm gonna feed him if you're coming for me. Hope you're ready for a demon. I got eyes in the back of my head. I'm seeing take me for granted and you know I'm leaving. I'm gonna take what's mine with the webs I'm weaving. I could so if you've been watching my workout vlogs, you'll notice I myself, in the recent amount of time I've been training, is no stranger to Hatfield squats. Don't even remember the last time I did a legitimate free squat in terms of having the bar on my back, but it feels like it's been a while just because I've been loving the hat squats lately. I have been doing other leg movements, obviously, but Hatfield has been my main, let's say, heaviest exercise that I've been going on. And there's a reason for that, and I'm gonna explain that to you in this video. So overall, what is a Hatfield squat? Let's describe it. It's when you have a safety squat bar on your back, and then you have something out in front of you that you can place your hands on. It can either be band pegs, it can be plate loading pins where you would put like storage, that's personally what I use. Or if you don't have either of those things, you can just set up another set of J hooks put a barbell on it and then go from there. The reason I like either the band pegs or the plate storage is simply due to the fact that the handles of the safety squat bar might interfere with that. I've seen it happen in the past with uh, just a barbell. So with the band pegs and the plate storage, you kind of have a dead space in the middle and the handles are free to roam wherever they want. If you're lucky enough to have a safety squat bar that you can unscrew the handles like mine, you're in luck because then you could use a barbell if you don't have access to those other things. So the setup is completely up to you. Why I like this exercise is that you can manipulate your form. If you want to get more of like say a super knee forward squat to bias your quads because you might have weak quads, you can because you can manipulate your form with the assistance. If you want to sit back more, you can. If you want to squat wide, but typically don't have the balance or the strength, you can. Why? Due to the assistance of your hands. In fact, the reason why I use this exercise, I use it as an overloading exercise to use more weight than I can typically squat. Now, what does that do? It doesn't really overload my legs in a way. My legs are not the limiting factor here. My upper back and my torso is the limiting factor. My hands allow me to really drive my upper back and really get my upper back and just entire torso engaged throughout the movement. You'll notice during a normal safety squat bar, you might round at the top if that's your weakness, which it's gonna be most people's weaknesses just because of the way the bar is built. But with this, that doesn't happen. So it allows me to strengthen up my spinal erectors and my upper back and just let me know what these heavy weights feel like as opposed to being surprised when I unrack those weights for the first time. If you are having trouble learning what it is to brace under heavy weights, or just wanna feel what a heavy weight is throughout the entire range of motion, a half field squat is a great exercise. When I break up my max effort exercises, I kinda of have them in order of stimulus. And as you can guess by the way I'm talking, half field squats are gonna be at the higher end of that stimulus because I'm able to load up so much weight. Now you might be thinking the hands are cheating. No, 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 it's not cheating. I'm not yanking myself up. I'm giving myself minimal assistance, just enough to power through sticking points and make the rep feel smooth. It's not like I'm not using my legs at all anymore. Now, is it a one-to-one -one ratio? If I could hat field squat this, I could free squat it? Absolutely not. The mechanics are totally different. But I use this as a confidence boosting exercise. It's not cheating, it's just feeling heavy weights. It's a high demanding CNS exercise. Now what I used to do when I was preparing for let's say a powerlifting competition, I used to overload myself with more weight than I was planning on squatting so that the weight I was actually squatting would feel super light. It was just something to trick my brain into feeling confident when I would unrack the weight. Because when you're in a competition, there's nothing worse than when you're unracking the weight and it's like, ooh, this kind of feels heavy. Because already it's a mental game. So this boosts your confidence. So if you're gonna squat, let's say 405 for the first time, but you can hat field squat 500 pounds and you felt what that looked like throughout the range of motion. When you unrack that 405, it's gonna feel like a joke. And that's very key. You're feeling it throughout the whole range of motion as opposed to just at the top. So what I like to do when I make a video like this is break down how it can be effective for 
your goals and what you train for. So let's start off for bodybuilders. To me, this gives you the feel of a free squat, but it also feels like a machine at the same time. So you're getting some form of stabilization because it is a free weight exercise, but you are locked into place and you don't need 100% stabilization. So it's, it's kind of a hybrid exercise, which would make it very, very effective for bodybuilders. And like I said earlier in the video, you can manipulate your form to emphasize different areas of your lower body that you might feel need more work than the others. As I mentioned before, for power lifters, it's perfect to overload, to get some heavy weight in there. You can even do it to a box. If you're a fan of box squats, you can do it to pins. You can manipulate your form. If you're a super wide squatter and you want to get narrow stance squats in or vice versa, the possibilities are endless. You can use it for assistance. You can use it as a main movement. Athletes, if you are someone that has maybe beat up shoulders or you do full body workouts or you're like pressing and squatting in the same session, a head field squat could be a good option because if you want to limit the amount of stress that your shoulder's going under and you don't really want to beat your shoulders up by getting under a straight bar all the time, the half field squat can be a great option. And for the general population, let's say you just train to train. This is on your heavy leg day or just on a leg day. This exercise is less technical, less coaching, less teaching, less worrying about form has to go into this. You can self guide yourself with your hands. You don't have to worry about balance. Like I said, it's a hybrid exercise. Feels like a machine because you have more stabilization, but it's not completely like a machine because you still have to stabilize yourself in some way, shape or form. So half field squats have been a great addition to my lower body workouts. I do them both on heavy and speed days. I do them for assistance. I do them all. Hope this video helped you. Here's the breakdown. And as always, have a great day, ladies and gentlemen.